stage the man who, by the grace of God, will lead the next government to resolve the crisis that the Mahama-led government has plunged this country into. I could talk about his achievements, his achievements as a human rights activist, his achievements as a minister of foreign affairs, his achievements as attorney general, his many achievements as we all know in politics. But today, I want to instead talk about why this man, Nana Adodankwa Kufuado, is the man to lead Ghana out of this current crisis. At this crucial point, we need a competent person with an established track record of accomplishments, a man who understands the gravity of the task at hand, a man with a vision, a man with a plan, a man with a team. He is an incorruptible character. We all know how his opponents have tried. A man who has the nation Ghana at heart, put his nation before his own interests and before the interest of his party during the election crisis uh, of 2012. He stated to his followers, I am saddened by the verdict, and I know that many of our supporters are saddened too. For the sake and love of our country, we must embark on a path that builds, rather than destroys, to deal with our disappointment. This is the man who truly cares for the peace and stability of Ghana. He's a family man. He's married with children and grandchildren. He loves them dearly. Anna is in crisis. He needs someone who can save us and save our children. Nana Ekufuado is the man. The man of the moment. He has been the man of the moment. Ladies and gentlemen. His Excellency John Ajekum Kufo, Chairman for the occasion, the Acting National Chairman of our party, the Honorable Freddie Blay, my good friend Elimbele Blay, MPP National Officers, members of the National Council, the Chairman and members of the Council of Elders, members of Parliament, MPP parliamentary candidates, the regional campaign teams, and the, cons and the campaign sector committee chairman and members, constituency chairman, our former ministers, metropolitan, municipal, and district chief executives, and party officials, members of the diplomatic corps, representatives of fellow political parties and identifiable bodies, members of the media, fellow MPP members, fellow Ghanaians, 
my beautiful lady Rebecca and my daughters. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm glad that we are making such a heavy, uh, 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 happy event out of the launch of our manifesto. It is a fact of our lives that not many people, all political parties for that matter, in our country, appreciate the significance of a manifesto in a democracy. Some see it simply as a list of promises to attract votes and not much thought or intention is given to their fulfillment. To others, it is an opportunity to engage in some light-hearted tomfoolery. For my part, I fully understand the consequence of putting your signature to a contract. A manifesto represents for me a solemn social contract between the electorate and the elected. The manifesto, the manifesto should also help the electorate to distinguish between the various political parties because the plans and programs they would set out would be influenced by their ideologies and beliefs. By offering the MPP manifesto to the Ghanaian public today means I, as the presidential candidate of our party, sign my part of the contract. Your vote will constitute your signature on the contract and your mandate for me to implement the ideas in the manifesto. There is a dangerous lie poisoning our politics that must be quashed decisively. That is, the notion that the two major political parties, the NDC and the MPP, are the same. We in the MPP know from whence we came. We have never had any identity crisis. Right from our UGCC roots, through the various incarnations to the present day MPP, we have felt firm in our belief in multi-party democracy and free market economics, even when these were not fashionable ideologies on this continent of ours. We were never tempted during the many years we spent in opposition to compromise our beliefs. And when at last we have the opportunity to govern this country under President J.A. Kufour in 2001 to through to 2009, our performance demonstrated we were comfortable in our skins to borrow a manner of speaking. The private sector flourished and businesses thrived. I do not propose to speak about what the NDC stands for, save to make the point that the party had been in power for eight years. It was when they lost power and were in opposition that they met and decided that they were social democrats. One would hope, therefore, that our manifestos should show us what we are and stand for. We of the MPP have always taken our manifesto seriously because we believe politics is a serious business and asking for the mandate of the people to govern is a serious business. Our manifesto also gives us the opportunity to reiterate our firm stand as the party of the rule of law, the party of business, and the party that builds and creates wealth. When we drew up a manifesto that we titled Transforming Lives, Transforming Ghana, you would remember that some people simply wanted a debi keke. 
And when they appropriated our title, they have been at a loss about what to do with it. On the one hand, it is possible to see the comic side in the manifesto pilfering phenomenon and agree with the great minds thinker like Wisecrack. But on the other hand, it is a dangerous practice for our country, for political parties, simply to take on concepts and programs they do not believe in nor have thought through. Let me give a few examples to illustrate the point I made. The NDC did not believe in the National Health Insurance Scheme. They demonstrated the level of disbelief by walking out of Parliament when the NHIS bill came to Parliament and it was passed without their input and came to operation in 2004. Proof that they did not believe in it and certainly did not understand it came in 2008 when the NDC campaigned on a harebrained idea to change the NHIS to a one-time premium paying scheme. Is it any wonder that the NHIS has been in so much trouble since 2009 under the government of the NDC? Or let's take free SHS. The NDC made it vulnerably clear that they did not believe in it. They did not like the idea, and they rubbished it at every opportunity. It is not surprising, therefore, that they've been having such a hard time trying to run their watered-down version of free SHS. In other words, it helps to believe in something, to spend time and energy to think it through, and to get passionate and competent people to lead in the implementation of the program. That is the MPP attitude and our approach to the business of governance. We are not looking for catchy or meaningless slogans because they will win votes. We have not, not put together a manifesto that sounds good but does not positively affect the lives of our country. You have heard all our speakers today state clearly that we are offering solutions to the problems that face our country. We're offering solutions that will take our country out of the crisis in which we find ourselves. I've heard the President of the Republic make the breathtaking claim that the economy is not in crisis. And he went further to suggest that those who say the economy is in crisis have bad eyesight. The president even says that those who say our economy is in crisis are unpatriotic. Let me state clearly and without any equivocation that John Dramani Mahama cannot teach me any lessons in patriotism. My love for and belief in Ghana is total and has stood the test of time. All true lovers of Ghana know that the circumstances of our existence these past eight years is not the Ghana that our forebears fought for. The Ghana of the past four years is certainly nothing like the Ghana that the current population of Ghanaians aspire to. I want a Ghana that has equal opportunities for all its citizens and provides quality accessible education to ensure a skilled workforce that can compete in the globalized economy. When we talk about rest restoring allowances for teacher trainees, for example, it is not because it is a vote-catching strategy. It is an integral part of restoring dignity to the teaching profession. I want a Ghana where our young people can feel 
and be confident of a vibrant future. I want a Ghana where hard work pays and competence rewarded. I want our farmers, fisher folk, traders, teachers, drivers, mechanics, students, nurses, carpenters, artisans, professionals, industrialists, hairdressers and, take and tailors, and everybody trying to earn a living to feel their efforts are appreciated and they're able to prosper in their chosen fields. I want a Ghana where honest labor is remunerated with honest returns. I want a Ghana which has a vigorous social welfare system that protects the vulnerable and the disadvantaged. I want a Ghana which is a leader in technological innovation and scientific research in the region, on the continent, and in the world. I want a Ghana where we appreciate the importance of the environment, and we acknowledge that we are custodians of the forests, the rivers, the lands, and the animals for generations yet unborn. I want a Ghana where the cleaning of surroundings is not limited to a monthly activity, but is what we do regularly as part of daily activities. I want a Ghana where every citizen has access to potable water. I want a Ghana where the rule of law is the ultimate and equal sanction for all citizens. I want a Ghana where political activity is conducted with civility and honor, and no one thinks of rigging an election as an option. I want a Ghana whose public discourse is directed at resolving the urgent needs of the people, and not one based on a constant diet of ceaseless propaganda, deliberate misrepresentations, and outright lies. I want a Ghana where government is accountable to the electorate, not with artist impressions of projects and green books, but with cold facts and figures. That is how public officials treat citizens with respect. I want a Ghana where we do not have a, a political cycle of three and a half years of suffering and three to four months of concerted effort to buy off the memory of pain. I want a Ghana where the innate good humor and well known within the context of a strong, confident Africa that plays its proper role in the Committee of Nations. President Mahama might not recognize the suffering of the people of Ghana and might not be hearing their cries because he has sadly insulated himself from the reality on the ground. He has probably not met young Godwin. He did what every child is urged to do. He went to school. He studied hard. He got good grades. He chose to go to the school of hygiene and he finished three years ago. He is still sitting at home. He hasn't got a job. No one who has been through the school of hygiene for the past four years has been placed in our health system. I have met many of them and thousands more like him. Young, vibrant Ghanaians who want to work but cannot find jobs because President Mahama has run our economy into the ground. If the president would only look a little closer behind the veneer that closets him, just a little behind his immediate circle of family and friends, he will see and feel the agony of Ghanaians. If he looked a little closer, even at the rank and file of his own party, he would recognize that this is indeed an economy crisis. Maybe the president should talk to young Awal Mohammed, 
who was until this past week the Deputy Director of Communications of the NDC Zongo Caucus. He does not sound to me like an unpatriotic young Ghanaian. If the President looked a little closer, he would see the army of desperate young employed, a young unemployed who are in despair. If he would see a little closer, he would see the number of teachers and nurses who have worked for three years and been told they will be paid for three months. If he looked a little closer, he would see the number of businesses that have collapsed as a result of the ruinous years of Dumso. I have met the hairdressers, the vulcanizers, the tailors and the food sellers who have been reduced to penury because their businesses could not survive the energy crisis. Yes, there are a few people who have prospered under this government, largely members of the president's family and his inner, his inner circle. This country remembers how an MPP administration under the leadership of John Ajekum Kufo took a country conditions and within seven years had transformed it to a lower middle income status. We were all witnesses to the buzzing business atmosphere and the daily expansion of enterprises. We all saw how many Ghanaians living in the diaspora took the big decision to come back home. We all saw our currency restored to root health and nobody needed to be told the Ghana was where it was all happening. We gave rise to the legend of Africa rising and was indeed its poster boy. It is a tragedy, a tragedy that now they are famous for all the wrong reasons and the hope that came with the discovery of oil and for being known as a country with a well-managed economy has disappeared. My fellow patriots, our current sad situation cannot and should not be our lot. I have said it often and I'll keep saying it. We are not destined to be poor. It is the belief that Ghana deserves a brighter future and can be made to work again that drives me and keeps me going. I stand before you, a Ghanaian patriot that wants the best for our nation. Yes, I am passionate about education because it is education that made me. The countries that have made great strides in our time have relied on educated and skilled populations. Education is the anchor for all our plans and programs. I am passionate about the rule of law because it's the bedrock of a successful, well-ordered, and prosperous society. The guarantee of the rule of law breeds confidence and attracts business. I am passionate about a promoting a state structure that rests on a true separation of powers with three genuine co-equal branches of government because that is what guarantees good governance and is the best protection for citizens. I'm appalled by the poverty and deprivation that I see around our country because it is unnecessary. We have drawn up a comprehensive program to grow our economy and make sure no part of the country is left out. I am disgusted at the cavalier attitudes towards corruption in public life. I believe that the everyday petty and oppressive corrupt practices that blight the lives of men of ordinary Ghanaians will disappear if high government officials are seen to be persons of integrity. That is the quality of governance, a government of integrity I'm offering the people of Ghana. I stand before you as a small and honest man with a big heart for Ghana. I offer myself as a man before, born before Ghana's independence, but the good Lord has been good to me 
and blessed me with good and wisdom to attract and lead a competent and enthusiastic team. We believe in the programs that we have drawn up in our manifesto because they offer solutions to the crisis the years of NDC mismanagement have brought to our country. I know that the programs by themselves will not do the trick. We have learned this lesson from very bitter experience. If programs alone could solve our problems, SADA would have brought prosperity to the three northern regions of our country by now. Instead of which, SADA has become an embarrassment and a gaping sore on our national psyche. But then the SADA phenomenon might well be another good example of what happens when a party takes up an idea or a program it does not understand or believe in or got the know-how to implement. To my fellow MPP members, I say to you, we have a good story to tell. It is not enough to count on the suffering of the Ghanaian people as the reason to vote for us. Our programs will restore hope and bring prosperity. Let us go to every part of the country and spread the story of our good news. Tell the young people and the students about the skill training programs. Tell them there will be opportunities for all. Tell the farmers they will not let be left to their own, but will, given, but will be given the, so, the support to making farming the profitable and fulfilling business it should be. Tell the business entrepreneurs that their tax burden will be reduced and their business will flourish so they can create jobs. We must make sure our message is heard loud and clear from Axim to Aflao and from Accra to Paga. Tell them we shall treat the mandate they give us with respect and we shall make Ghana a happy and prosperous place for all her people. Tell them the MPP did it under President John Ajekum Kufour, and the MPP will take us to an even higher level under President Nana Adodankwa Akufua. Tell them of the dangers, the real dangers, of four more years of John Dramani Mahama, under whose watch the economy has shrunk systematically, with this year's GDP growth rate being the lowest for 22 years. The IMF also tells us in its report that Ghanaian workers were poorer last year than the previous year, and they were poorer in 2014 than in 2013. Tell them it doesn't matter if they have never voted MPP or have regulated, regularly voted NDC. Tell them that this is a battle to save Ghana. In this election, we are faced with an opponent with unrestrained and unprincipled access to state resources, with apparently unlimited cash, who has confidence that they can buy your vote. If they cannot, they will try to bully you. This is the opponent we have in this election. So let me speak the words of David to our Goliath. And I quote, and I quote, you come to me with a sword, with a spear and a javelin. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. of the armies of Israel, Ghana, whom you have defied. This day, 
the Lord will deliver you into my hand that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel, in Ghana. Then all this assembly shall know that the Lord does not save with sword and spear the battle, for the battle is the Lord, and he shall give you into our hands. Mamadou Bawamia as my running mate. Ladies and gentlemen, the battle is the Lord's. They have more money than us, but the battle is the Lord's. They have more outward motors, outboard motors, more roof seats, more laptops, more sewing machines to give away, but the battle is the Lord's. They have more giant-sized billboards than us, but the battle is the Lord. In truth, in truth, fellow Ghanaians, we are many and they are few, and the battle remains the Lord's. I thank you, and may God bless you all. Wow! Let's hear it! Let's hear it! Let's hear it!